For I am crucified with Christ And yet I live Embrace the cross Welcome to Crossbound Ministries, where we are bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, encouraging Christians and pointing sinners to the cross. Will you please pray about supporting our broadcast and ministry that gives us the ability to spread God's word? You can get involved by going to crossboundministry.com. Please welcome our preacher, Mike Sadler, as he brings us an important message from God's word. Praise the Lord. Embrace the love. Amen. Thank you for tuning in today. And if you'd like to follow along, we're going to be in the Gospel of John. We're going to start in John chapter 1 and verse 38 as we're going through the Gospel of John. What a great, mighty, and powerful book it is out of the Bible. If you ever wanted to point somebody to Christ, point them to the book of John for sure. If somebody says, where should I start reading the Bible? You can start in the Gospel of John. So John chapter 1, verse 38, the Bible says, Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? Hey, let me tell you, the Savior, Jesus Christ, is always interested in those who want to follow him. He's always interested in those who are seeking after him, who want knowledge and and want fellowship with him. And here he showed his interest by turning to the two disciples and asking, what seek ye? He asked them, what seek ye? He knew, even though he knew the answer to that question, because Jesus knows all things things. He wanted to hear it from them. And a lot of times, if you study the Bible, when Jesus asked a question, it was to make that person think. And so he asked them, what seek ye? And so, but he he wanted them to express it in their own words, in their own wants, and in their own desires. You see, Jesus already knows everything about you, but he wants you to talk with him, and he wants you to express it in your words, your ways, and in your desires. He wants to hear from you. And their answer was, Rabbi, where are you staying? Hey, they showed, and they wanted to be with the Lord and get to know him better. Where are you staying at? Can we come hang out with you? Can we come spend a little time with you? Can we come fellowship with you? Can we come walk and talk with you? Where are you staying at, my friend? And so they weren't just satisfied with just merely meeting Jesus. Can I say, don't you ever get just satisfied because you have met Jesus. Don't ever get satisfied because you're saved. Always seek after Jesus. You always want to get to know him better and more intimately and closer and walk with him. Just like they did. Where are you staying? Let me spend a little time with you. They long to have fellowship with, with him, with Jesus just like me and you should. We should long to have fellowship with him. And if you want to walk and talk with him today, and this is how he does it, through his word, through the Bible, he will show you and point you in the direction that your life needs to go down and the changes that you need to make. He has given you his holy word. So make sure that you are in it, reading it and applying it. And yes, you have to work at it. It just doesn't come naturally. You have to desire those things. Like an athlete, they desire to be in shape. They desire, they work at it. They strive for it, right? And if you want to be a a close follower of Christ, you have got to be disciplined enough to read and study your Bible. Just like an athlete's got discipline enough to get up exercise, eat right. If you want to be a strong warrior for Christ, you've got to be disciplined enough to get up and seek after him, actively seeking the Lord. Amen. So the next verse says, John chapter one, verse 39, he saith unto them, come and see when they asked him, what, 
where, where are you living? That's what he said. He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the 10th hour. Now, in my Bible, there's a note that says it's, that was a Roman time for 10 o'clock in the morning. So about 10 o'clock in the morning, here we go. Let's, let's go hang out with Jesus. And he said to them, come and see. So no one who genuinely desires to be with the Savior is ever going to be turned away. You know what Jesus is going to say, with, say to you? Come and see. Come and fellowship with me. And they came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him. And about the 10th hour, the Bible says, hey, those men had never been so honored as to hang out and talk with and fellowship with the person, the creator of heaven and earth, the moon and the stars, the sun and the sea, the savior of the world, Jesus Christ himself. Amen. And we do get to see him today in the Bible, in your heart. But one day, one day we will physically be with the Lord Jesus Christ. What an honor a privilege it will be to spend that time with him in person, in fellowship, eye to eye. Amen. I so look forward to that day of spending time with my Savior, just like these men did. Hey, where are you staying? Let me go with you. Let me hang out with you. Let me spend some time with you to get to know you and fellowship with you. Never had these men been so honored to spend time with the Savior. Amen. And I so look forward to that day. And the next verse says, John chapter 1, verse 40, one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Uh, One of the two disciples was Andrew. We don't know who the other one was. It possibly could have been John who, who penned this book. Some scholars say that he was too humble to put his name in there, but we really don't know till we get into heaven. But amen. And so one of them was Andrew, and he's he's not as well known today as Simon Peter. But it's interesting to know that these two were the first ones to meet Jesus. Amen. In this in this book, these two. And so moving on, John chapter one, verse 41. He first findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Amen. When he, when a person finds Jesus, they want their family to know about it. They want their family to meet Jesus. That is a good sign that somebody truly got born again. When they get saved, they want to introduce their family to the Savior that they, they have met, the Lord Jesus Christ. They, nothing a, a, a new convert has more zeal than anybody to see people saved. Hey, you, you got to meet the one that I know, the Savior, and that is Jesus because salvation is way too good to keep to one's self. And and that's what he's doing here. When a person finds Jesus, man, they want their family to know about it. They want their relatives to know about it, their co-workers and their friends. Amen. Let me tell you about Jesus. Let me point you to Jesus. And so Andrew went quickly to his own brother Simon with the thrilling news, just those little words, we have found the Messiah, it says in that verse. That's all he said. We have found in the Messiah. What an outstanding statement that is, eh? To make that, I have found the Savior. Amen. And when he said that for a long time, they had been waiting on the Christ. They had been waiting on the Savior. And truly, they were making history, right? In that, they written it down in the Bible. They were making history, amen? And how simple that message was. We have found the Messiah. You know what that teaches you? You don't have to be a great preacher. You don't have to be a clever speaker or a big public speaker. You don't have to be any of those things. All you have to do is tell people what the Lord Jesus has done for you in those simple words, and God will take care of the rest. He says, my word shall not return return void. If you put God's word out, what it has done for you, it will not return void, the Bible says. So you don't have to be a great preacher or a big speaker to be able to speak those things. You just put it out there. I have found the Messiah. Amen. And let God do the rest, just like he did in that verse. Amen. And the next verse says, John chapter 1 and verse 42, and he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. What a strange thing to say, isn't it? Be called a stone? What do you mean a stone? 
We're going to get into that in just a second. And so Andrew brought his brother to the right place and to the right person. Amen. He didn't bring him to a church. He didn't bring him to a creed. He didn't bring him to a clergyman or a preacher or a certain denomination or a certain building. No, he brought him to Jesus himself. And that's what you need to be doing. Don't worry about bringing people to a certain denomination or a person or a certain preacher. No, you bring them to Jesus. Amen. Point them to the Savior of the world because he is the one that that can change a life. He is the one that can change a person from the inside out. He is the one that can change the eternal destination of that person when they're on their way to hell, but now they're on their way to heaven because they have been saved and born again. Amen. There is no denomination. There is no building. There is no preacher that can do that. Only Jesus can do that. And that's what he did. He pointed them to Jesus. Amen. So what an important act that was. Because Andrew's interest, Simon later became a great fisher of men and one of the leading apostles. He most certainly did. He most certainly did. And so he also knew that Simon was an unstable character. And finally, he knew that Simon's character would be changed to be as firm as a rock. He may have been shifty before, but Jesus says, when I pick you up, when I make you, when I mold you, when I get done with you, after maybe maybe I got to put you through the fiery furnace or the refiner's fire, as some people call it, or whatever the case is. But he says, when Jesus says, when I get done with you, you're going to be as firm and solid as a rock. Amen. And that's what Jesus can do for you. He can pick you up, change you, make you, and mold you, and make you solid as a rock. And by that, I mean solid, as solid as you know, Jesus is the only way where he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father, but by me. And so how did Jesus know all this? Because Jesus is God. He is God in the flesh. Amen. He is God in the flesh. He is part of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And he knows all things. Amen. And so the next verse says, John chapter 1, verse 43, the day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, follow me. And the Lord walked northward into that region known as Galilee, and there he found Philip and invited him, hey, come with me, follow me me. Amen. And that's what, if you're saved, that's what he did for you. He came to you and he said, follow me. And those are great words because of the one who spoke them, the creator of the heaven and earth, the moon, the stars, the sun and the sea. And that is the savior of the world. The one that spoke them. What a great privilege to be offered that. Hey, follow me. What a great privilege it is to be able to follow Jesus. Amen. And that is a privilege because none of us are worthy. That's why it's a privilege. The Bible says there is none righteous. No, not one, not me, not you, and not no one else, only Jesus. And so what a great and wonderful and mighty privilege it is for Jesus to offer us that. Hey, follow me. It just, what a simple message, huh? The Savior, listen to me, the Savior is still issuing that simple, small invitation to every man, woman, boy, girl, and child. Amen. Follow me. If you are under the sound of my voice and you're not saved, Jesus is offering that to you today. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Jesus is offering that to you. He is saying, follow Follow me. Can I just say, is there someone out there that you know that is not saved? Is there someone out there that you know that is on their way to a place called hell? And the Bible says that there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, gnawing of tongue where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Can I just say, you may have some feelings that, well, man, that person, that let them go there. But let me just tell you. If you'll stop and think about it, even with your own worst enemy, you see, we'll think after, well, maybe after a hundred years, that, oh, that's enough, they'll save them, or after a thousand years. But no, the Bible says it's for, it's eternal. It's an eternal 
fire, the Bible says. They'll never get out. The rich man in Luke chapter 16, that is a literal man. He is still there to this day. And if you have never read that, that is the one place in the Bible where a person is in hell and it records their emotions, their thoughts, and their feelings while that person is in hell. And you can read it today. Amen. And that should convict you to go out and tell people that they need to follow Jesus. Jesus has got his handout offering saying that to each and every one of you. Follow me, but it's a personal choice. You have to make that choice. Nobody can make it for you. It is personal. Amen. You're not saved because grandma was saved. You're not saved because mom and dad was saved. You're not saved because your dad was a preacher or you grew up in church or you went to a Christian school. No, you are saved because you made that personal decision to follow Jesus, to repent of your sins and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you've had that, if you have that today, then you should be out giving that message. Hey, follow Jesus. Amen. And the next verse says, John chapter 1, verse 44, Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Bethsaida was a a city on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Few cities in the world have ever been so honored. It was the home of Philip, Andrew, and Peter, but yet it rejected our Savior. Amen. And many today, many today do the same thing. They reject the Savior. And that, that city, Bethsaida, we, we're not even exactly sure the exact spot of it because it's not around anymore. I don't know if it was destroyed because it rejected the Savior, but it most certainly did. And the next verse says, John chapter 1 and verse 45 Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Notice that, the son of Joseph, the last part of that verse. And so Philip wanted to share his newfound joy with someone else, so he went out and found Nathaniel. Like I said, new current, new converts are the best soul winners. Hey, you have got to know, you, I've got to tell you what Jesus has done for me. Amen? And so new converts are the best soul winners. they got the most zeal. You've got to tell, they just got to tell what Jesus has done for me. Hey, his message was simple. And it was to the point, and yours should be too. Your message should be simple and to the point when you tell people about Jesus. He told Nathaniel that he had found the Messiah who had been foretold by Moses and the prophets. Amen. He described Jesus as being the son of Joseph. Uh, Jesus, of course, was born of a virgin, Mary, amen, from the Holy Ghost. He had no human father, but he did have a father here on earth, a stepfather named Joseph. Joseph was Jesus' stepdad. Hey, there's some great encouragement right there for all you broken homes that have been divorced. You hear me? Jesus had a stepdad whose name was Joseph. Amen? And he was the best stepdad ever. So if you ever need an example of what kind of stepdad you need to be, you need to read that story about Joseph, how he honored Mary. He married her. Amen? And so there's some encouragement if you're a step parent, a step mom, or a step dad, that Jesus himself had a step dad. And many people don't like me saying that, but it's the truth. He most certainly did. Many times in the Bible, people referred to him, is this not the carpenter's son? Amen. Now they didn't may not have realized that he was the Messiah at that time, but that's still how they knew him as the carpenter's son. And even here, the end of that verse, it says, the son of Joseph. So Joseph was a noble man. And so if you're a stepmom or a stepdad, that is a great example of what kind of step parent you should be. Hey, he put, put Jesus first. He knew he was the Messiah. Amen. And so Joseph was a stepdad. What a great encouragement. What a great encouragement it is to me. And Joseph adopted him. Hey, that's that's my son. I'm sure he raised him just like he was, loved him just like he was, took care of him just like he was. Amen. Most certainly. And so the next verse says, John chapter 1 and verse 46, And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and 
see. Hey, Nathaniel had problems, and Na- Nazareth was a despised city of Galilee, and it seemed impossible that, that something good can come out of that. It's kind of funny to me, because I can hear him in his mind. Can anything good come out of this dump? Have you ever felt that way about something? That's how Nathaniel, he's, that's how he's feeling here. Can anything good come out of this dump called Nazareth? Amen. But listen, when Jesus gets involved, it doesn't matter how big of a dump it is. Something great's going to come out of that, amen. He can take something that's messy and moldy and tore up from the floor up and turn it into something shiny and new when Jesus gets involved. So it seemed impossible to him that a Messiah would live in such a terrible place, in such a terrible neighborhood. And so he just he just voiced what was on his mind like we do a lot of times. He said, is, is anything good come out of this place? And so I want you to notice, Philip did not argue He felt the best way to meet objections was just to introduce men directly to the Lord. And that's what you should do too. Hey, when people get off on all these paths, what about this in the Bible? What about this? What about that happened? Hey, just point them to Jesus. Just keep pointing them to Jesus. Those things don't really mean much. Just point them to Jesus. Amen. Most of the times people will try to get you sidetracked when you're, when you're talking to the Lord or or trying to get them saved, or they'll worry about this little, little thing that they think in their mind is a discrepancy, or they think something wrong in the Bible, but what they're really doing is trying to get away from that subject of Jesus is the Savior. Amen. So you keep pointing them to the Lord, most simply. Hey, it's a valuable lesson for all those seeking to win others to Christ. Don't argue. Don't don't engage in those prolonged discussions. Just bid men to come to Jesus. Amen. Ye must be born again, the Bible says. And so John chapter 1 verse 47 says, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. You know that Jesus may have never talked to him before, never met him before, but he knew everything about him. He could see right through him, and he can me and you too. He sees right to the core of us, and he said about him, he declared in him that he was an Israelite in whom there was no trickery or deceit. He could see right to the core of that person. And, and listen, you don't have to worry about what's in every individual's heart. All you got to do is point them to Jesus. Jesus can see right through him right to the heart he most certainly can and our last verse John chapter 1 and verse 48 says Nathanael saith unto him whence knowest thou me Jesus answered and said unto him before that Philip called thee when thou wast under the fig tree I saw thee Nathaniel was obviously surprised that a a total stranger would speak to him as if he had known him all along. And Jesus will come to somebody that they think's never known him and speak to him and, and cut right to the heart like he's known him all along. That's how a man that's never been to a church can walk into a church and that preacher that's never met him preach a message and it speak directly to his heart like that preacher had followed him around his whole life and wrote down things that he had done and feelings that he has had because it is not that preacher. It is Jesus himself. Amen. He can see you right to the core of a person and speak right to them like he's known them all their life. Amen. And so apparently he had not been completely concealed when he was sitting under that fig tree. No, Jesus could see him. Even though there might have been eight overhanging branches, he might have been hiding out under the under the limbs and the, and the leaves, but Jesus could see him. Can I just say Jesus can see you. Jesus could see him, even though that man may have thought he was hidden. Nobody can see me. I'm hidden here. Jesus can saw him. Can I just tell you there's nowhere on this planet that you can hide that Jesus cannot see you and see right to your heart. He knows every thought, deed, and action. And I commend you today, if you have never been saved, that today, the Bible says, is the day of salvation. Today is the day to repent of your sins and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. We pray you have been blessed by today's message. If you have been saved or are in need of a prayer, please contact us at 352-247-9200. 
That's 352-247-9200. Thank you for tuning into Crossbound Ministry Radio Broadcast. Will you please pray about supporting our ministry and broadcast? You can go to crossboundministry.com or send your support or gift to P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. That's P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. For a gift of $25 or more, we will send you a copy of Ray Comfort's book, Nothing Created Everything. Please pray for us as our ministry and radio broadcast grows. Tune in every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. to hear a message from our preacher, Mike Sadler. You can follow Crossbound Ministry on Facebook or visit us on the web at crossboundministry.com. If you are a woman in need of help with with your pregnancy, there is hope. You can reach out to the Citrus Pregnancy Center. There's locations in Inverness and Crystal River. Their phone number is 352-341-5176. That's 352-341-5176. This broadcast has been sponsored in part by Henley's Grading Incorporated for all your land clearing and hauling needs located in Hernando, Florida, 352-897-3507 and Bruce Kaufman Construction providing all your home building needs, 352-400-0230. This program is sponsored by Crossbound Ministry of Inverness, Florida, 352-247-9200. That's 352-247-9200.